Welcome back to GB Guns, and today we've got something from Double Star that I've been waiting quite some time to review. Obviously, this is not a rifle, this is a handgun from Double Star. That's what's coming up next on GB Guns. So it comes in a rather decent hard sided case with holes for locking. I want to thank whatever companies it was that made that the standard. Flip it open, this is the PhD. You know, I've got a few degrees, I don't have a PhD. I'll take this one, what do you think? Let's see what all comes in this box. You have our paperwork for me borrowing the gun. Here's our manual. Picture free. They're probably assuming that if you're buying this, it's not your first 1911. These are not cheap guns. A little bit on using the X sights or express sights. They are a bit different. And we have a trigger lock. Not sure what these pins are for. One pin. I'll figure that out later. Let's take a look at the gun. So starting off, always we show clear. Ooh, magazine certainly ejects some hop. It's like sort of like a tire air pressure gauge, right? I say that tire is full. We'll take a look inside. Chamber is clear, and now we can take our look around the gun. Starting at the front is a 45. Let's see what that N and M is for. Might be in the manual somewhere. Good solid lock up. Notice there's no rail on this. No checkering on the front. No checkering on the front strap. And that's actually something I've come to prefer. Now when I got my first 1911, sent it off to Springfield, had all that custom work done, if you've seen that video, um, I came to regret checkering on the front. Sometimes it can be a bit obnoxious depending on your grip style. We have this nice chamfering here, this relief cut for the finger, which for my hands means I can grab rather easily. These are Magpul 1911 grips. Magpul makes everything, and why not 1911 grips? Relief, making getting to the magazine release very easy. Safety, switch is nice and clean. We don't have serrations for press checks, but there is a little step here, and that works well enough. Broad serrations on the back, coming around the back side, there's those excess sights. You make a lollipop. Very simple. You know, I for target shooting, maybe not the greatest, but these are fast sights to use. They're very quick, and you might notice that they leave your field of view rather unobstructed because you're not looking down through that rear sight. You're looking over the top of it. I think that's kind of a neat feature of them. Looking at our slide to frame fit. Very snug. Hey, I don't think I can get any movement out of that whatsoever. We have this uh, extended beaver tail, which wraps up nice and high, completely cupping the hammer. Serrations on the back are vertical, which I appreciate. That means they're not going to cut your dig in. And a nice rounding of the heel makes it quite comfortable. Coming around the right side of the gun, no controls. Sorry, lefties. Maybe a slight relief to the ejection port. It's our PhD logo. Good looking gun. Let's take a look at the trigger pole. With our lineman gauge at the ready, depressing the safety. Five pounds. Four pounds, 12 ounces. Four pounds, nine ounces. Seems like it's getting lighter with each pull. As far as the actual feel, slight take up. It's a wall. Breaks right at the wall. Reset. Kicks you out to it, much like a Walther. Then you come back to the wall, fire again. That's very controllable. It's light, but it's controllable. And that. 
I think is appropriate for what this gun is. Not a first gun. This is a gun connoisseur's gun. <laughs> Personal home defense is what the PhD stands for, for those who want a 1911 at home. These serrations up top help against glare. They can also be used for aiming, as can the slab sides of a 1911 in absolute low light, but that's not necessary because this is a tritium front sight post. Let's take a look inside the gun next. The magazine, by the way, before I forget, is an Act Mag out of Italy, numbered and with windows on both sides, which is great for doing quick checks. So for disassembly, once again, we're gonna check for clear. We're clear. I'm gonna depress the bushing and or the the end of the recoil spring. Turn the bushing clockwise, which of course is the other direction. This is where having a tool like I normally do can be of help. There we go. Very fresh spring has got some buoy to it. That releases all that pressure. Now we can move the slide back to where that lines up right there. We're gonna push on this other side, pop the pin, pull our pin out, and now the slide can come off. We can now get our guide rod. This does have one of those impact absorbing polyurethane bits on the end of it. Spin this back around to remove the bushing and take our barrel out the front. So looking at our barrel, nice polish there. Looks pretty clean. Taking a look inside the slide now. Some wear marks just from cycling. And this is an 80 series, you can tell by that little safety plunger there. That just helps block the firing pin unless the trigger is pulled. Some people complain about the trigger feel of them. I don't seem to notice much of an issue. Uh, I think uh, modern internals make for a great trigger regardless. Got some nice polish there for the feed ramp. And our rails are good and clean. This little piece here is what pops up to depress that plunger. I don't see any machining marks. It's nicely made. So, have you heard of a Double Star 1911 before? Do you know anyone that owns one or have you shot one? If so, please leave comments down below. If you're interested in this, leave comments down below. I'll get this back together and we'll take it out to the range hopefully within a week or so, and let you know how it does. Hey, thanks again for watching GB Guns. If you made it this far, I'm assuming you like our format, or you're trying to figure out how to make some angry argumentative comment and uh, start up an argument down below, that's cool. Click the giant griffin to subscribe. We've got a Patreon page set up now. That's where stuff gets published first. It goes up there while I wait for manufacturers to okay things or uh, maybe I'm fine-tuning it, so if you want to see behind the scenes, it's on the Patreon page. Over here is a link to a video that YouTube assumes you're going to like based on stuff you've watched. I don't know if it's any good, you tell me. And down here is the playlist affiliated with what you just watched. We do have lots of playlists, that's where everything's organized. So if there was something in this video and you're saying, hey, where's the shooting, or where's the tabletop, or oh, I didn't know about, check the playlist. That's where it's going to be. So once again, thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next video.